If something turns from science fiction to reality, that's usually good news. In this case, not so much. The term termination shock has jumped from science fiction into the news. The reason is that some climate scientists have argued that the recent increase in the pace of global warming is due to cleaning up the air. I have a summary. The term termination shock was popularized by Neil Stevenson a few years ago, but it's been used in the climate change literature for 20 years to refer to the sudden end of geoengineering. Suppose we spray particles into the upper atmosphere to block sunlight. This could reduce warming by a few degrees, so it'd be substantial. But then we need to continue doing this, or all that warming is going to come back very suddenly as the particles are washed out of the atmosphere. This is the termination shock. It's one of the reasons why most people don't like the idea of reducing warming by geoengineering. That'd require reliable and coordinated planning and if we were any good at that, we wouldn't be here in 2025 talking about geoengineering, would we? Personally, I'm convinced we'll do it, but I'll get to this. Let me first tell you why the termination shock has crept into the headlines more recently. It's because we've been cleaning up air pollution, and the question is how much that contributes to the warming we're seeing. The issue is burning fossil fuels doesn't just release greenhouse gases. It also releases sulfur dioxide and other chemicals, which form tiny particles called aerosols that can brighten clouds and reflect sunlight. That cools the surface of our planet. Indeed, it's why climate scientists think between 1940 and 1970 or so, global temperatures were pretty much steady or maybe even slightly decreased. That was all the air pollution. But in contrast to carbon dioxide, air pollution directly reduces people's quality of life. And so in the past decade, especially China, has made a lot of effort to reduce air pollution from burning coal. Another much discussed turning point was that the International Maritime Organization has much tightened the regulations on ship emissions. The result is that our planet now absorbs more energy from the sun, especially over the oceans. The climate scientist James Hansen has called this a Faustian bargain. For decades, we emitted both long-lived carbon dioxide that warms and short-lived aerosols that cool. But like in Goethe's play, eventually there's a price to pay, and that's due when we clean up the aerosols. In a 2013 essay, Hansen wrote that then the devil's payment will be extracted from humanity via increased global warming. And would you know it, in the past years, temperatures have indeed increased more than most climate scientists thought they would, supporting Hansen's warning. Or maybe temperatures didn't increase and it's just a temporary fluctuation and temperatures will go down again. It'd be good to know, wouldn't it? After all, Faust did go to heaven eventually, after helping the devil to introduce paper money. It all makes sense now. Well, this is why the question of just what aerosols do to average temperatures has become so controversial. Controversial. And once again, the question comes down to clouds. If you ever want to make a climate scientist cry, ask them about clouds. They have no idea what's going on with the clouds. Air pollution aids the formation of clouds, okay, but the effect on temperatures depends on what type of clouds form where, and that is far from clear. That's why we have one camp of scientists which argues that aerosol reduction explains the recent spike. The authors of one paper, for example, described the ship emission rules change as an inadvertent geoengineering termination shock. And can you blame the media for picking it up? James Hansen and co-authors likewise argue that aerosol masking has been underestimated and that recent reductions helped push record warmth. But most studies have found that the effect is overall small, 0.0 five degrees or below. So not even a 
tenth of a degree on average, though it might be larger regionally. For example, the reduction in air pollution over big Chinese cities might have increased heat wave temperatures there by half a degree. The ship emission reduction plausibly also had a local effect directly over the shipping routes. To me, it seems that termination shock is somewhat of an overstatement. It's more a shockino than a shock. But I also think that this isn't really the relevant part of this discussion. The more relevant part is no one has any idea what the hell is going on and what the consequences will be of our fiddling with the climate. We've seen temperatures over Europe increase much faster than elsewhere in the world. No one predicted this. The Arctic tundra has turned into a net emitter of carbon dioxide rather than an absorber. No one predicted this. The Gulf of Panama seasonal upwelling failed in early 2025 for the first time in the 40-year record. No one predicted this. this This, in my mind, is the problem. We're changing our environment quickly and we don't know what we're doing, which is why I strongly suspect that many nations will soon take to geoengineering as a local countermeasure, not the global atmospheric injection. No, they'll try to regionally reduce temperatures by spraying something. Give it a decade and the chemtrail conspiracy theorists might actually be onto something. If you see me outside with a ladder and a measuring spoon, I'm calibrating, not marinating. So much about clouds. Now let's talk about something more cheerful, how Planet Wild is saving the Amazon. The Amazon is home to three million species of plants, animals and fungi, but it's on the verge of collapsing because of mining and illegal logging. That'll turn a 100 billion ton carbon sink into a massive carbon source. But Planet Wild has a plan. They're a community-based nature protection organization. Every month, they fund a new project to restore nature and document everything right here on YouTube, showing how the funds are being distributed, like their recent project, Protecting the Amazon. Our community contribution provided crucial tech for forest patrols and firefighting equipment and is even helping to get the region recognized as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. All that was achieved by us at Planet Wild. And you can join us to support monthly projects like these for as little as $6. That doesn't even buy you a coffee at Heathrow. Better still, I'll cover the first month of the first 100 people to sign up using my code Sabine29. Just scan this QR code or click the link in the description and you'll see the results of your contribution in less than 30 days here on YouTube. And don't worry, you can cancel any time. If you want to see Planet Wild in action, check their project protecting the Amazon right here. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.